service last week. It got a little warm. Uh, that's why I got my plant out here this week. <laughs> can, y'all, uh, if y'all, can y'all hear me good out there in the cars? Yeah. All right. <laughs> good deal. Okay. So, yeah, I had to come down here yesterday trying to fine tune the, the, you know, the car part of it, trying to get the, that part going. But, uh, yeah, but it is good to be here this morning. You know, we can't be inside right yet, but it's been good to see here and see your beautiful faces as we come together to worship the Lord this day. is an awesome thing. Uh, with that in mind, there are a few announcements. announcements uh, one, uh, the prayer quilt this morning is for Ben Barber, a uh, nursing home resident. Uh, that's Jody's father, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and the knots are already tied, but we're going to pray over it this morning um, when we do our prayer time. But you don't have to worry about coming up here and tying a knot on it. And today is Thunder Sunday. If you didn't pay attention when you came in, but on the table back here, we have the tin can back there next to the basket for the offering. So make sure you pay attention to both of those. Mm -hmm. You know, the tin can is for, you know, our normal third, Thunday Sunday. We can't pass it around <coughs> like we're used to doing, but... You know, I, I you know, don't drop a little bit of change, and I, I happen to remember it today. So. Yeah. Uh, and it will go towards our Rise Against Hunger goal. And, uh, and we do have a card here from the Episcopal Church of the Ascension that says, Dear Fulton, on behalf of everyone associated with our daily bread, food pantry, thank you for your generous donation of canned goods. This allows us to be more generous to our patrons. Again, thank you for your continued support. Sincerely, Monty Taylor. Sorry. Yes, Monty. Monty Taylor, volunteer. Okay. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Okay. If not, do remember, you know, we've got to stay spaced out here. And, you know, when we go to leave, we can kind of like leave from the back. You know, so we kind of stay apart. And if you need to uh, want to, you know, visit a little bit, we can social distance out in the parking lot. So we can let everybody kind of go from here. And, uh, you know, they're, like I, we got more room up here because it's kind of hard to preach in, in the mask. But, uh, that's why there's a little extra room up front here. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, what we try to stay, you know, kind of stay, up, stay apart. You know, we can't shake hands or do anything yet. And do have a little bit of music, but, you know, singing, you can kind of listen to it. You know, if you want to kind of hum along to yourself under your mask or whatever, that's kind of, that's up to you. But, uh, we, you know, we can't really advocate singing out loud yet, but uh, 
that's where we are right now. We have to do everything we can to take care of the people we have, and you know, that's part of loving people right now. So, okay. Let, my, let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. <coughs> Gracious and almighty God, oh Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come here to gather to worship your holy name in community this morning. Lord, to be able to gather here in fellowship and Lord, we just pray that everything said and done for this, this day would be for your glory, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit move among us in powerful ways. Lord, draw us closer to each other and closer to you this day. We do pray in Jesus' most precious and holy and glorious name. Amen. 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 Uh, all right. I've got a couple songs this morning. Uh, Come now, found of every blessing, and seek ye first. As we worship the Lord together this day. Like I said, you can't really sing out loud, but you know, comfy, just concentrate on the words and you know, or you know, and just let this become a time of worship between you and God.
this time as we move into a time of prayer this morning. Are there any praises or thanksgivings that you would share with the church this morning? Well, Xander had a birthday yesterday, and mm -hmm. he's growing big, and I just <laughs> thank God for him. And we took a little trip yesterday, and we just had a good day with him yesterday. All right. Happy yeah. birthday, Xander. Thanks. My four wheeler has four feet. <laughs> four wheeler has four feet. Four wheeler has four feet to the Yeah, I saw the picture on Facebook. <laughs> four wheeler has four feet. All right. Okay. All right. I'm thankful that we can be here this morning and that we have advanced enough to get so that people can be in their cars and listen also. Right. Uh, I think we all need this time together. And I think the world needs this time together, but not everybody's doing that because our world's in trouble. Uh, but I'm thankful that we can be here this morning. Yeah, yeah it's good to be able to be here in, you know, hopefully a little bit smoother this morning, plus, you know, with the, you know, those can sit in their cars if they need to, and that's a good thing so we can have more people here together as we really do. The world needs to come to Jesus. Yeah. And it really does. Uh, okay. I'm going to sing happy birthday to the manager. <laughs> okay. Are there any other birthdays that we're celebrating right now? Uh, Jody has one. Jody Pack has one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jody had one this past um, week. And Tim. Yesterday. Was your birthday yesterday? Uh, Happy birthday yesterday. I think hers is yesterday, too. Huh? Jody. Was it yesterday or day? Something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we want to sing happy birthday this morning? Yes. Yeah. I think it's a joy that Kate and I, I've been told that once you get married, you had the, the spouse in too. Tony <laughs> bought this system for people to hear it in their cars. And, you yeah. know, I know we got this nice building. But who who wouldn't want to be out here on a morning like this morning and looking out during the sermon what the good Lord has given us? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, I'll bring that up. Who wouldn't want to be? <laughs> All right. Okay. Tim said it's also President Trump's birthday, so we need to pray for him. We need to pray for him well, anyway. We, we have, yeah, we always need to pray for him as our president and all of our leaders. I mean, whether we agree with them or whether we don't, we need to pray for them that they let God's spirit move in their hearts in their minds yeah, but uh but yeah we did yeah we are grateful yeah they came up with the fm transmitter for us and that we were able to do that but let's thank you happy birthday this morning for me. happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday Yeah, and I, I tell you what, I, talking about being out here, you know, and, I mean, I've been just, you know, everything is just so green right now. If you really pay attention, if you look around, everything is just so beautiful right now. And I, I posted some pictures on Facebook last night just sitting on my back porch and, you know, the sunset. And within a few minutes, I mean, the way the colors just changed and everything. And um, just God's beautiful creation all around us. And I hope we always take time to... You know, to pay, to pay attention and appreciate what he's given. Yeah. Are there any other praises this morning? Are there any prayer concerns that you'd like to lift up this morning? We need to continue to remember Christopher Smith. We had the wrong name last week. Uh, Christopher Smith, who uh, continues to be in ICU. Very touch and go. Uh, but we also need to remember, and that is Jason Stewart's mm -hmm. stepson. Uh, we also need to remember the family. Um, Caleb is 20 and Bailey is 16. And Andrea put a post on this week that they have seen many things this week or last week that they shouldn't have ever had to see. So we know it's hard on the family also. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray for them. And also because of the COVID-19, they can't be there for him. Mm -hmm. So that makes it even harder. Right. And also the the guy that I 
talked about last week, Carl, that they thought had a heat stroke. Right. He did not actually have a heat stroke. He had a brain aneurysm. So, but he is uh, gaining some feeling back. But, you know, it's mm -hmm. touch and go with him also. Okay. So we'll continue to remember them. Okay, Marianne, birthday was a few weeks ago, but in heaven. Well, she's in a better place than we are. Okay. Any others you lift for, for prayer this morning? I'd like to raise Diana Rischel. Diana? Rischel. Rischel. Mm -hmm. brain cancer. Brain cancer. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Are there unspoken requests by a show of hands this morning? Yes. The Lord, huh? Let's remember Gray and Angel. Remember? Yeah, Gray Angel. Okay. All right. well, let's go uh, to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's begin in silence as we offer our own prayers and petitions before God. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, Lord, we again come before you this morning. Lord, we are so grateful, Lord, for all of your many blessings. Lord, you have been so good to us. Lord, when we look around at the beautiful creation that you have given us to enjoy, Lord, uh, Lord, to hear the insects and the, the animals and the sea, all the green around us, the flowers blooming. And Lord, in the feel of the breeze. Lord, all these things that work together in harmony. Lord, we can never imagine the great design that went into each one, but Lord, then we look at ourselves and our neighbors and and we see the beauty of each one that's created in your image. And Lord, we're even more amazed. Lord, to think how wonderfully made we are. Lord, the building blocks of all things, the cells, and, and then they make up your people. Lord, and we can speak and breathe and understand and see and hear and, Lord, love. Lord, all these things that we can do and the way we're put together is just so awe-inspiring. The Lord, it just shows your great power. Lord, we know you like to show off. You like to show how. Lord, all we got to do is look around and we see your great power. Lord, you are the best craftsman. You really are. So Lord, we just praise you this morning. Praise you for all that you are. And Lord, we praise you for all that you've done in our lives and in this world. Lord, especially for your Son, our Savior, Jesus, who came into this world, lived among us, showed us what love really is, and showed us how to live for you. And Lord, and when he was gone, Lord, you sent your Holy Spirit, who is with us in the world here and now. Lord, you have never left us alone, and you never will. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord. We pray that we will be able to live into your love each and every single day, Lord, but through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, because it is all about you. You are our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, the one who empowers us and emboldens us this day. It's all about you. 
And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you are, Lord, for all that you do. We pray now in the way that your Son and our Savior call us out to, by saying together, <coughs> Our Father, who <coughs> art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. All right. As we prepare to receive the scripture this morning, I invite you to hear the words of a just simple praise song, Lord, you are more precious than silver. This time I invite you to hear the words of Scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to read the whole chapter, but it's a good one. Uh, this is from the Message Bible. This one. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it. It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is master, without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere. God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful. Wise counsel. Clear understanding. Simple trust. Healing the sick. Miraculous acts. Proclamation. Distinguishing between spirits. Tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out by one by one by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. 
is exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all say goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. We each used to live independently, call our own shots, but then we entered into a large and integrated life in which he has the final say in everything. This is what we proclaimed in word and action when we were baptized. Each of us is now part of his resurrection body, refreshed and sustained as one fountain, his spirit, where we all come to drink. The old labels we used to, once used to identify ourselves, labels like Jew or Greek, slave or free, are no longer useful. We need something larger, more comprehensive. I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all like it's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand, embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to the body. Would it make it so? If fear said, I'm not beautiful like the eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. But I also wanted you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are part of. An enormous eye or gigantic hand wouldn't be a body but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each its proper size and its proper place. A part is important on its own. Can you imagine eye telling hand, get lost, I don't need you. Or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice it works the other way. The lower the part, the more basic, therefore necessary. You, can't, you can live without an eye, for instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you are concerned with, it makes no difference whether the part is visible or closed, higher or lower. You give it dignity and honor just as it is without comparisons. If anything, you have more concern for the lower parts than the higher. If you had to choose, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to full-bodied hair? The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part depended on every other part. Our, the parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in his church, which is his body. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic unidimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues. And yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now I want to lay out for you a far better way. So this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, a couple weeks ago, we celebrated what? Pentecost, right? You know, and, that, and Pentecost is, you know, that's the Sunday that we really celebrate the birthday of the church. Because that's the day that God's Holy Spirit really got poured out on all the disciples in a very powerful way. You know, we saw that we've seen the Holy Spirit all the way back to the beginning of creation. God's Spirit hovering above the waters. You know, and there are people been empowered by the Holy Spirit all through Scripture, including in the Old Testament. But, in Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is no longer with us, but in us. That's the difference. We have been given God's Spirit. When we accept Christ, His Holy Spirit comes in inside of us. Now, sometimes that's to varying degrees, depending on how much we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. You know, as I talked about last week, you know, the Holy Spirit really does not get talked about a whole lot in most of my non-denominations, including the United Methodist Church. And that is a sad fact. You know, I think sometimes the Holy Spirit kind of gets treated like the redhead stepchild of the Trinity. 
We talk about God the Father. We talk about God the Son. But we tend to only talk about God the Holy Spirit kind of in passing. You know, we talk about God's Spirit, you know, empowering us or whatever, but we don't really talk about who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit really does in the world today. You know, so last week I talked about who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a person, first and foremost. It's one of the three persons of the Trinity. It's not a thing. And there's a lot of people that have referred to the Holy Spirit that way. It's not a thing. But the Holy Spirit is a person that we can get to know in a personal way. And, and that is, and the Holy Spirit is really how we know the presence of God in the world today. And except for when the time when Jesus was with us in person, the Holy Spirit is really how we have known the presence of God in the world. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who is with us, in us. The one who speaks, you know, in a, a still small voice, the voice of conscience that tells us, you know, you know that's not right. You don't need to do that. It's the Holy Spirit that empowers us. You know, the Holy Spirit that helps us understand Scripture. The Holy Spirit that helps us to be Christ's witnesses in this world. You know, and that's really a lot of what it comes down to. You know, Jesus said that he was going to send out his Holy Spirit on us that we might be his witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, and all the world. You know, that's the beginning of Acts. Right? It's also that we can be his witnesses. And unfortunately, sometimes the church has not been such a good witness. And one of the biggest reasons, I think, is because we, you know, we, we, we've gotten content to come to church on Sunday mornings. Or, and that's it. You know, we don't really go out into the world to be the church that he's called us to be. You know, we're, we've stopped being his witness empowered by his Holy Spirit. You know, and we have really lost a lot of the, I mean, we've lost a lot of the Holy Spirit in, in practice. We don't let the Holy Spirit move among us in the ways that he wants to do. We don't. I mean, we look at things like the things in the, in the New Testament. You know, all the way through the book of Acts, all the ways that the Holy Spirit moved through his people. And we think, oh, that's Bible time. That's not the day. But that ain't nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, even Jesus said that we would do greater things than he did. Right? Yeah, and right and you know, we can look back at, you know, even the beginning of the nineteen hundreds. You know, the rise of the Pentecostal movement. You know, you know the Pentecostal holiness movement kind of that got to start from Methodism. Can you believe that? It did. And even, you know, even before that, the, the camp, great campfires and stuff, that was really led by Methodism. That was us. But it don't look much like the Methodism of the day, does it? Just beginning in the 1900s with the rise of the Pentecostal movement, there were, you know, there was a the, like, great outpouring of the Holy Spirit because people really prayed for the Holy Spirit to move. And they saw healings. They saw people raised from the dead. People speaking in tongues and not just, you know, some kind of spiritual language that nobody could understand. That mean people actually showing up as a missionary in places they didn't, where they didn't speak a lick of the language, didn't even really know where they were, and they started speaking the language. I mean, it's the same spirit in the world today that we see in the Bible. But we've lost it. We, we I think we're afraid. You know, here, you know, we, we look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, and we, we think about, when we think about gifts of the Holy Spirit, what's one of the first ones we usually think about? Speaking in tongues. All right? That's one of the first things that usually comes to our minds, speaking in tongues. And that one right there kind of scares a lot of people off. But we don't understand it, for one thing. But then there's also been a lot of people who try to make the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the way that you know you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's not what Scripture says. Scripture says that that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, and if, you know, but there's also interpretation of tongues. If somebody just starts 
standing up in church service on Sunday morning and start speaking in tongues so that nobody can understand them. That does not do anything for the church service. That does not help anybody. All it does is point to them and how great a person they are. It's so spiritual. You know, even Paul said, you know, to summarize Paul, you know, like he said, you know, somebody stands up in church and starts speaking in tongues and nobody's interpreting it. Somebody lying. That's basically what he said. Somebody lying. Either the person that's trying to speak in tongues, they either draw attention to themselves, or there's somebody there supposed to be interpreted in the end. But there are, there's, also, and there's also two different types of speaking in tongues. You know, mostly there's a spiritual language if, you know, if there's, nobody can understand it. But also, you know, like I said, I mean, it's, it would be like me showing up in Germany or something. I don't speak a lick of the language, but God gives me the ability. Give me that gift to just start speaking. If I believe God's powerful enough, if I believe that His Spirit can do it, then why not? His, he gives us the gifts that we need. But Paul puts that in kind of the bottom of the list. He talks about these others. Wise counsel, wisdom, clear understanding. You know, we think about Solomon. That was a gift of the Holy Spirit that he had that wisdom. You know, we all, you know, he gives these wisdom, you know, these gifts to different people. Healing of the sick and miraculous signs, miraculous acts. There are people today who have the gift of healing. We, we don't see it quite as often as we did, but there are still people in this world who have the gift of healing. Proclamation, preaching, distinguishing between spirits. You know, there's a lot of pe people out in this world, there's a lot of people who try to speak for God. And distinguishing between spirits is God giving you the wisdom to know if that's a spirit, really, truly the spirit of God. Or if that's the spirit of the world, the spirit of the devil. That's what that is. Who is really speaking? Tongues, interpretation of tongues. At the end of the chapter, it talks about apostles, prophets, teachers. You know, somebody can truly open up the scriptures and help you understand them. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers. Those who pray in tongues. You know, there are all kinds of gifts the Holy Spirit gives. But, the, you know, one thing we have to think about, you know, we think sometimes when we think about gifts, we think about our talents, the, you know, the abilities that God has given us. But there's a difference. The, every one of us has some natural talents. Somebody might be good at music, for, you know, for instance. Somebody might be good at speaking in public, might have, be, you know, have a charisma that they can help, you know, kind of convince people of certain things. You know, somebody might be good at woodworking. Those are natural talents that people have. And I do believe that those are gifts from God. Those, those come from God. But the difference is, our natural talents, we can either, we can use those how we want. I mean, our natural talents, you know, we can kind of use those how we want. The results are up to us. It is. You know, somebody's good at music. You know, somebody maybe can pick up a guitar and play a whole lot better than I ever could. They can pick up a guitar or they just open their mouth and this beautiful voice comes out. The results of how they use that are up to them. Some people might ignore it and not really do anything go on, just live, you know, do a day job or whatever. Or if they try to try to use it, they might they can use it for God. They can. Or they can try to use it to build fame and fortune. Right? The results are up to the person because I mean it's a natural ability that God has given them, but they can use it how they want. Somebody's good at woodworking. I mean, they can, you know, use their hands to build things that point people to God, or they can use their hands to build idols. But a gift of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural ability that God gives each of his children. I mean, that's something that comes upon us and the results are up to him. And a lot of times he will marry these gifts to some of the natural talents that we have. But he'll take the natural talents that we have and empower us to use those in a way we never even imagined. Take somebody given the gift of evangelism when they've got the natural ability for music. All of a sudden... God gives them the ability to use their music 
to reach people with the gospel of Christ in what power in ways that they could not do on their own. You know, opens up the doors, open up opens up, you know, ways for them to go out into this world and proclaim his gospel. Right? You know, when people are empowered by the Holy Spirit, even their natural gifts, natural abilities are married to gifts of the Holy Spirit that you know are helpful for the building of his kingdom. You know, we're, and we're all given a gift of the Holy Spirit. Or more. Every one of us. There are a lot of people that don't use them. Don't know they have them. If you don't know what yours is, come talk to me. I'll help you figure it out. There's some resources. You know, and I mean, we can talk about it. We can, kind of, we can talk about where you feel God really at work in your life where he might be pulling you. You know, there's some tests that you can take that really help you really do some self-reflection, figure out where God's Holy Spirit is really on you in a powerful way. I'll help you figure it out. But we have to be open to it. We have to be open to letting the Holy Spirit use us. I mean, there's a lot of people that have gifts that they never touch. And that gift is there. That gift's not going anywhere. God has given us that gift. But there's a lot of people that don't ever use it. And you know what? The world suffers because of it. That's one of the biggest problems this world's having right now because people have come, we've gotten used to coming to church on Sunday morning and we don't really let the Holy Spirit move us to do what he has called us to do and to be the rest of the week. You know, we don't let the Holy Spirit really empower us and bolder us the way we need to. You know, part of I know several years ago, you know, one of the big books in you know, Christian circles was The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren. You know, and you know, I might not agree with all of this theology, but one of the things that he said in there, you know, kind of summarized, basically he said, you know, you, uh, I have a gift that's not for me, it's for you. You have a gift that's not for you, it's for me. If I'm not using my gift from the Holy Spirit, I'm robbing you. If you're not using yours, you're robbing me. Think about that. I mean, right here, I mean, Paul talks about being, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit being used for the common good. I mean, we're, we're all in this, you know, the body of Christ. You know, he uses this great image that we have heard so many times, but it's so true. You know, if we were all just ears, how could we see or if we were just eyes, how could we feel? Every part of the body is important. Even some of the and even though you know we might give greater dignity or honor to certain parts of the body, you know we might think about how great the eyes are or the hands are. But he's talking about some of the vital organs. I mean, down in here, we might not really think about the, the organs and stuff in here so much. But we, if we don't have those, we're dead. You know, one of the reasons, I mean, when they, back when the sword fighting and stuff, they really did that in wars and stuff, one of the places they would try to get you was here. Because they, if they take you out here, you, I mean, it might not necessarily be immediate, but you're, you're done for. Every part of the body is important. It has to work together. You know, if one part of the body isn't working so well, then the rest of the body's hurting. The rest of the body can't do the job that it was, you know, at its full capability, right? And it's the same way with the church. Every one of us has been given the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can be the body of Christ in this world to help each other and to help this world. And if we don't do it, if we don't let the Holy Spirit move in us and empower us and embolden us through his gifts, then we're not living up to what he would have us to do and be. There's somebody in this world who needs what you have. There's somebody in this world who needs what you have. And you might try to say, well, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher. Well, okay. 
We're not all preachers. We're not all teachers. But maybe God's given you the gift of wisdom. Maybe God's given you the gift of understanding. Trust. Simple trust. You know, distinguishing between spirits. You know, we don't recognize, okay, that sounds like they're trying to make that sound like it's from God, but it ain't. And then helping people figure that out. You know? Helpers. That's a gift from God. Organizers. You know, there, may, there might be some people who have some natural talents in that, but if you really let God's Holy Spirit come into that, and use that. Then they allow you to do things that, you know, it's on a supernatural level that you could not do on your own. Every one of us has something that this world needs. Every one of us. But we have to let the Holy Spirit fill us up to help us see what our gifts are and then use them. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, I think I'm getting more, I'm getting more and more. I'm just I see too many Christians who are content with the status quo. We're content with doing the things the way we've always done them. You know, we come to church on Sunday morning, but that's about as much as it really affects the rest of our lives. You know, we're, we're in church and we try to build, we, we, we enjoy coming to church and we're worshiping God and we're trying to build each other up in the body of Christ. But we're content with that. And we don't go out into this world. The world needs what we have. This world is hurting. And the more and more I look around, I tell you what, I'm about to take a break from Facebook. I'm about to get off of Facebook altogether except for posting my videos online. I'm, I'm about done. Because about every time I look at it, I get upset. I really do. You know, there's some good things on there. You know, you see there's some cute, you know, like, you know, puppy videos and stuff like that that'll help, you know, bring, bring, bring a smile to your face, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff on there and people going back and forth and I'm tired of it. But what it does is it reminds me just how much this world is hurting. And this world needs the truth of the gospel of Christ. This world needs God's Holy Spirit. But it needs Christians who will stand up and be the church he's called us to be. Let God's Holy Spirit empower us, embolden us to go out. Every moment of our lives, let His Holy Spirit fill us in such a way that it just overflows. So that others see Him in us. And that we are not afraid to share His gospel. And we are not afraid to let people know the truth. The truth of God, the truth shall set you free. Right? Amen. This world needs the truth of the gospel of Christ. This world needs what we have. Too many, too many of us were afraid. So we just think that and we think that it's not, I mean, we don't really have anything to offer. You know, somebody else could do it better than we can. But every single one of us has a gift that this world needs. If you don't know what yours is, I'll help you figure it out. Okay? Trust me on that. Because this world needs what you have. We, we've got to let the Holy Spirit move and use us for His glory. Amen? Amen. I think I'm going to do something. I think we need to be reminded just of the awesome God we serve this morning. 
Uh, it's one of my, yeah, one of my favorite tones. And we can't forget just how awesome God is. What He has done and what He can do through us. It's not about us. It's not about how talented we are, how good we are, you know, how if we're perfect or not. It's about Him. His power and what He can do through us. I want you to hear this, this morning, awesome God. When he rolled up the seas, he ain't just putting on the ridge. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. I always mix up the uh, first and second verse. <laughs> oh. Not like it. Rolls up a sleazy ancient putting on the ribs. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his ears. Our God is an awesome God. No one wasn't joking when he took him out of you. It wasn't for the reason that he shed his blood. every single one of us because it shows how great he is that he can use even the most broken of us he will empower us and use us the world needs what you have as we leave this place today may the amazing grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the unconditional love of God the Father Almighty the power the presence of of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. And empower you to be His witness in this world. Amen. 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 Amen.